Having regard to those, uh, what I'd said earlier about people present, we shall do uh, the items in the order. Agenda uh, item, <coughs> item 6, um, Land 25, F26, Crummy, Loose Drive, Airby, followed by Agenda item 8, Land Sports Club, um, followed by Agenda item 5, Colby Golf Club. And we will bear to order. Is that agreed? Okay. Well, first item then is agenda item 6, uh, 26, 20 is trying to vary if the option could introduce me to all this. Planning permission is sought for the demolition of the existing underlying the formation of a new vehicle access and the erection of um, six further dwellings on the site. The site will be developed by way of the erection of a new double bungalow on the site of the existing bungalow fronting Cornelius Drive. The land for the rear will be developed with six detached dwellings with vehicle access from Cornelius Drive. Each of the new dwellings would have our street parking provided and private community space by way, by way of rear gardens. All standard interface distances are achieved between new dwellings and adjoining properties, as well as within the site itself. The area is a well-established residential neighbourhood, comprising <laughs> a mix of house types with no prevailing house style. It is not considered that the development proposed would be harmful to the character and appearance of the area. There are a number of trees within the site that are not subject to any statutory protection and are considered to be of moderate quality and value. Whilst the trees are visible from neighbouring dwellings, from surrounding roads, they are only visible through glimpsed views between the dwellings, and their contribution to the character and appearance of the wider area is limited. In September 2018, an appeal on this site was successfully allowed. They granted planning permission for 10 dwellings on this site. The inspector considered that that development would not impact harmfully on the character of the area and that the loss of trees which have limited contribution to the visual amenities in the area would not be significantly harmful. The inspector also concluded that the development of 10 units would not have any significantly harmful effect on biodiversity in terms of bats and birds. This current application proposes a net reduction of three units on the site of that approved in 2018. There are several conditions which, which seem to deal with the protection of trees retained in the development together with bird and bat boxes across the site. It is, where it is considered the proposals will not significantly harm the current appearance of the area and are therefore recommended for approval. There is a qualifying petition of objection. Petition of point to adjustments.
formed part of your presentation to us. Um, and your, your time then is, then is, is, is five okay. minutes. Just, just play the short of the two videos now. Okay. The last 56 seconds. 56 seconds. But you can play it at the end. Okay. Do that. So, that, that being the case, because they're, very, they're both similar videos. So that being the case, you will address us then for four minutes. And I will let you know when you have a minute left. And then we will play the video. <laughs> okay, okay. okay. So just, right. just, just as no yeah. time is lost. I should have done that. I would speak prepared anyway. I've only got two days' notice, so I'm planning it. <laughs> so I'll do the best. Okay. So right, right. You can address us now. Okay. Uh, it's, it's really important from the outset that I'm not actually against the knee applications. I'm actually against the destruction, the needless destruction of trees, wildlife, and the environment. And we should all be feeling that passion at the moment, especially what we see in Australia at the moment. So, my view is, I am willing to compromise. I would love to discuss it with the architect, because there are various different modifications, and we can actually make everyone happy. We can say, um, there are actually two main trees which have definitely been completely erased by the current plants, which I'm rather angry about. One being the second one. This is the second one, um, and this is the view from my bedroom window. If the second one's here, there's a silver birch there, that's a black poplar, and all those are massive. They're twice as high as the nearest houses. How any planning spectrum man can actually suggest that you can't see that they won't make a difference in the skyline is beyond me. Anyway, they've been there for like a hundred years, and I need them. They're part of my life. I've been there for over 20 years, and I need those trees intact. And the, the, just the brief glimpse you saw then was actually the sycamore of that with starlings in it. Now, a few years ago, Mr. Rigson actually cut down, the African actually cut down a rowan, which was massive, at the end of my garden. And he did it. it I actually rightly pointed out to the council prior to his cutting it down that it was vital for local starlings. Starlings are in massive decline. And as a result of habitat destruction, and um, just after a couple of weeks after I submitted my letter of objection from that previous application, this happened. <coughs> he cut it down even before the application was heard. He knew that I actually thought that that was a great thing for wildlife and he maliciously cut it down and reduced the stump. And he's left the stump just the other side of the fence of my garden, just as a permanent reminder of just how malicious he was. Um, there's various so other, these are the, the starlings and the second one. There's another one. This is the view from street level, in the street. You can see those trees clearly from the street. How can anyone suggest, even the Oregon Bowman, the Tree Preservation Officer, claimed you could not see those trees from any of the surrounding roads. Sorry, but you can see them clearly. This is also um, a black poplar, which is the western side of the scheme. Garages are replacing that black poplar. They're very rare trees, and we need to preserve them as much as possible. This is the pear tree that prior to the last application, it was um, even Mr. Rickson's own survey, uh, conferred bat roots in that tree. And then mysteriously, not last bonfire night, but the bonfire night before, Mr. Rickson cut it down and made a bonfire in full view of just the other side of my fence, burned that tree despite it being illegal, and it's against the law because it's a protected species of bat, and he did that on bonfire nights. I actually informed David Ball and Phil Brightwood, uh, uh, Brightwood and they promised, uh, David Ball promised to get back to me after we made an investigation, I've heard nothing. Now it's totally legal, now unfortunately there's a new, there's a new survey, there's a new bat survey that Mr. Rickson's only produced since my letter of objection. He had, he produced for this application, in, 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 uh, he, had, uh, he, produced, he actually submitted the old eco-survey, which confirmed the bat roosts, and he pretended, he claimed it was brand new. It wasn't brand new, it was an old one, it was out of date. And so I pointed that out in my letter object on the 17th of September. On the 3rd of October, he produced a brand new bat survey, claiming that there were no bats. Mike Collins, your, your colleague, your counsellor, has actually been in those garages at the back of my house, and he can confirm himself there are bats there. The bat server which has been produced, they claim they did bit size in August, they didn't even go anywhere near the garage area. They didn't go anywhere near those trees. The tree, the bats which actually were resident in that tree have migrated 
to those trees. And now you need a brand new bat server. You need a bat to prove that, and also the plans. I've got to say that the plans, I've got the plans. I'll show you the plans. Um, this is where the, the second wall is going to be. It's a turning point with tarmac. If you're going to destroy the second wall, just for a turning point, what you need to do, instead of the roadway being that side, you can make it that side. It's a double bungalow, it's being demolished. Instead of putting the roadway on the right, it should be on the left. That roadway then can then clear away from those mature trees, and they'll be safe. But unfortunately, where the roadway is, they are destroying those trees. We don't even need any of these garages, because King's Drive has got about 100 empty for rent garages. No one wants them. Why do we need to build more garages? We okay. don't need that. Okay, so I'll let you go. Five minutes of all. Um, can I ask members of the committee if they have any questions for clarification? I, I think there's. Can we go for off and put it the trees so that we get an understanding of the trees? Could you put the still from the, the first from my bedroom to the trees? I think you saw that earlier. I think what I just want to establish uh, is by looking at the plans where, you, where the trees that you've, you've mentioned are on the plans. And so well, I can show you. Yes. Well, 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 yes. well, put it on here. We'll can I start the maps? No, I'll well, get the plan officer to do that. And what I just want to establish is whether these are the trees that you're talking about so that we can see the one. Of them. So that's my question. Are these the trees? So, can you. What do you want? Okay, through you, Chair. So the trees that you can see on the plan up on the screen, um, there's nine of them in total, and, and they're trees that are to be retained within the scheme. So the three trees along this boundary in here are a sycamore, a poplar, and a birch. They're to be retained. There's an ash in this corner, and there's um, a further group of ashes up here as well, but they're to be retained in the scheme. Yes, they are. No, no, not the sycamore. The sycamore has been written off. It's not on that. It gave the impression, but the sycamore to the right is going to be destroyed. The tree survey said it should be recommended destroy or replace. You can't replace a hundred-year-old tree with a twig. That is the and that is what you saw with the starlings. That's the sycamore, and that's been recommended for destruction. I'll, I'll just I'll, I'll just get the officer to double check uh, the, the situation with the sycamore because we have in front of us. All the, the, the plans you know, they said again, keep the simple, you need to get a road for the officer, for the member of the floor guys, for the results of the chief survey. Can I ask, whilst, whilst Matthew's doing that, we'll advise us further. T23 is the retained signal. Okay. So they say they're going to retain signal? Yes, yes, that's, that's, that's the point. Too much to go. That's what it says in the chief survey. Do any other members have any questions for us at all? Thank you, Chair. Um, can we just confirm when the, when the survey was actually done? Please. 2017. Um, sorry, just come back here. So is that still relevant? Yes. Yes. Oh, there will be no change. The, the pear tree has been put yeah. down since then. Can I, can I just, because we do this, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just asking whether members have questions for the petitioner at this point. When we have questions for the officers, we need to give them to that. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. you said that the the had cut down the tree. Back in doing it. Industry. Yes, he's done it intentionally. The bat said he claims it, was, it came down to storm damage. It's a lie. There's no storm. Okay. But then you said that Councillor Collins has been to visit the site. Yes. He confirmed the bats, the bats Where the bats in, the tree, in the garage area. The view from my bedroom in the, the garage area, which is open access to the public. And and, uh, and the, if you during the summer. Bats are in the tree or Oh no! <laughs> the no, they're coming into the garages. They're in the trees. Oh. You can't see them during the day. Yeah. I would have had a film of the bats too, but it's dark. I during the summer I could go out every dusk and have bats flying around me. And the bat survey that Mr. Richard now produced, which submitted on the third of October, pretending that they've done surveys during in August. <laughs> How gullible are people? Now, the, the reality is, they, even they admit, and if I show you the bad survey, 
I'll tell you some of the quotes in it. They even bring the wrong building. Well, 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 they actually well, bring the wrong building. Okay. I think you covered the question. Uh, uh, I think so. I'm sure members have looked through the papers. I'm stepping in a storm. It went down to the trees and the beam storm. Are there any other questions for us at this point, uh, Steve? Just to clarify. Just to clarify, the street that was taken down this point five night was the pair. I'll show you. And, and that size and is the I never even used it. And, 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 and that was the one the bats were in. So yes. And you put it down because you used the so, 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 so I take it they now moved to another tree. Yeah, they might raise it to these trees. Right, okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Mr. Hall, thank you very much for your Yeah. 
Thank you, Jim. Mr. Dodd, can you just confirm that the trees that Mr. Hall says are going to be chopped down as part of this application, you're saying that they're going to be retained? I, I, I can be honest with you, and because of the passionate nature of Mr. Hall's comments, I, I lost him as to exactly which particular tree he was talking about. All I can say is, is that there are a number of trees that were identified uh, as part of the appeal process that have been retained here. And if it's identified as tree number 23, as we discussed before, is that what he was talking about, then yes, I can guarantee it's there it's here as part of the conditions we've got to protect those trees during the development. And as I said, you know, we're not, we don't want to take all the trees down. We don't want to remove the hedge in. It's a, it's a, it's a nice place to be, and we don't want to take that away. Um, I, I can't, I don't know what trees you're looking at from your bedroom window. So I, I can't say exactly, but what I can say is it's here, and the client also says that that is what he's talking about, then yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, Steve. Can we start there? Just a clarification, was the pear tree one of those trees that were protected under the appeal process? Um, no. Um, as far as all of the trees that were protected as part of the appeal process are identified on here. So, and that particular tree isn't identified on here. Uh, I, think, I think the planning can confirm that. Well, we'll, 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 we'll no doubt have questions for okay. the officers on, on those um, oh. that, that um, issue. Uh, Cathy. Mr. Dog, Mr. Hall, um, when he was speaking, um, had suggested removing house number seven to the other side of the road. Is there any reason why? I, I, I imagine that then it would move. Um, lot six <coughs> backwards, and, and therefore your interface distances and so on and so forth, and the amenities of that particular plot will be affected, which would be why it was positioned in that way originally. Also, I imagine that the swing from uh, getting in and out of the side of the house will impact on that as well. So that's there for most logical reasons. Most logical reasons, yeah. Thank you very much for your time.
to look and protect our residents. I'm here to try and protect the residents that I represent, and you're here as a committee to try and protect the residents of the whole of the will. So I urge you, uh, committee, please reject again this application. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thanks for that, Mike. Uh, before I ask any members if they wish to ask any questions, um, I know you wouldn't want to mislead um, the committee or the members of the public. The, the application was originally refused by this committee, but was in fact allowed on appeal by the government's inspector. I think you might have misspoken. I did, yes. Yeah. 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 I did. I apologise. Um, just, just for clarity, um, in case there's any confusion, there is a good provision for 10 houses um, on the site, um, and that is a well, all the, all the things I've just said, Mr Chair, still stand. It's somebody's back garden, Cornelius Drive and the surrounding area is overpopulated. There's too many cars. It will destroy the amenities of the people's back gardens either side of this appalling development. But thank you, Mr Chair. Thank you very much. Anybody have any questions for Councillor Sullivan? To, um, over to members. Um, I guess the first, uh, again, I've asked, asked uh, you to, uh, to double check the, the situation with the trees. And there are uh, an ash, a sycamore, a birch, and a poplar along the line of the garages uh, and the existing uh, car park. Marked on the plan um, that we have uh, on the screen that are retained trees. Those trees, along with uh, the wood, all the ash uh, trees in the, uh, in the back. Um, I've also looked at the uh, appeal decision, uh, and as I've suggested, those trees were identified by the inspector. I've looked at the previous application, uh, and no tree uh, plan was in the world, and that would be type application. I have, however, taken note that the line of the road in the previous application is more to the uh, right um, and probably would have resulted in, um, in, in trios along that boundary. The new road line appears to me to be more central um, to, the, um, uh, to, to, to the access of the development site, which has allowed the developer to retain the trees that seem to be the subject of, um, uh, uh, of, of some controversy. I appreciate members have asked questions about trees that were on the site prior to the application. Um, at the end of the day, well, the fact that those trees have now been removed is, is not a material planning consideration. It wasn't for the inspector who, for whom it was also um, put in, in, in front. The trees do not enjoy tree preservation or protection, um, but uh, can potentially now be protected by condition um, in, in terms of the activity should the uh, application be approved. I'll just ask Matthew if there's anything. Over to members uh, for questions for officers or comments. Steve. It's just a quick question for Matthew, really. Um, if you have a bad survey and then the status quo is upset by the use of the tree, do you need another bad survey? Three, Chair. We, we've had a recent bad survey that was dated and submitted in October of last year, so it's relatively recent. Um, and that bat survey um, indicates that um, the bats may pass through and stay in the trees for a night or so, but there's no evidence that they're, they're roosting there. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think most of the lot of us were here when the first application came forward, and that's obviously not material, but the result of the appeal is certainly a material uh, issue. Um, we have a current legal application for 10 properties on that site, um, which the, has been allowed by appeal. If, if you wanted to take a, a balanced view um, in terms of amenity space for the occupiers and the protection for the trees identified of concern to the inspector, this would certainly in comparison be considered, considered a better application. Whether it's perfect is, is, is you know, the 
the main one at Perfect, but in terms of this planning committee's view, I would actually have to make that, that considerable considered judgment that this is a better application than the previous one, although reviewed by this committee, uh, allowed on appeal. So, my question is that is there anything to stop the developer going forward with that, that, that 10 house application? Um, if, if there isn't, then pardon the pun, and don't have hang out our, um, our residents who crash about the birds and so on. But if, if, if the bird in the hand seems to be more attractive to me as a member of this planning committee than the potential of the initial planning application being enacted. Uh, so my, you know, my initial view is that there has been considered uh, attempts to placate residents, and we all know where we are with the current application. We are talking about now consulting, so we can have consultation, but we're not talking about intensification for certain areas of the border. And you know, this is not over intensification by any measure. All these properties will have amenity space and be rather pleasant place to live as the developer talks about. So I, I think in the direction that we're traveling, that this would be considered a windfall site that helps towards the overall total of housing numbers. Um, all the ecological considerations I take on board, no one in this committee would want to endanger a back boost. It seems to be uh, conjecture whether there is a back boost, but the latest survey said there isn't. But irrespective of what I understand, a, a planning permission, you have up to five years to, in, to enact, is it? Or three, three years now, we have five. You have three years to enact, so it's still in date and still, still tenable. So my view is that the committee should really should be looking towards approval, but I keep an open mind until the very end until they have all the arguments. I was just going to briefly what um, Sue said. Um, I know the point that the council has sort of alluded that it's low development, but we have on this committee seen lots of sites which we would consider to be rather more overdeveloped than this one. And I think the layout um, looks, looks pleasant. There are trees still there. Uh, and as Steve um, alluded to, with regard to the local plan, you know, if there are pockets of um, development that we can use to alleviate any building on the green belt, then I think this is uh, a decent application and um, uh, if maybe that's what everybody said, I think it's approval. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Following on from the same theme, really, as I understand it, there's already a permission in place to build up to 10 properties on this land. If we tonight decide to reject the application before us, which is for either six or seven, whichever way you look at it, would the applicants have to appeal against that, or would they be able to stand on the original uh, appeal decision? And if they did appeal and won, is there a possibility that costs might be awarded against the council? Thank you. Through you, Chair. Well, the previous permission is valid. Um, it's still in the stand. Uh, it was granted in September 2018, so it doesn't expire until September 2021. Um, you know, I, I can't say with any certainty that a cost award would be granted, but you know, the, the, given that there's a, a, uh, a permission for 10 on that site, if you were to um, refuse um, 7 on the site without good reason, uh, then I, I would say the, the, the the likelihood of a cost award increases uh, uh, given the, the very recent history on the site. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I think um, members would probably <coughs> refer to the extended planning permission. Um, you know, uh, almost an answer to, to, to Brian's question. We do have those two possible routes if it's refused tonight. You can say, well, to help with you, to help with the trees, I built 10 houses with the road line that, that goes through the top of the uh, uh, birch and the sycamore, um, and I'll put 10 trees on the site. As it appears to me from the presentation that we received, the debate and the discussion that took place at the people um, has obviously made the developer think, well, actually, it might look a lot better um, if I'm able to retain an awful lot more of the trees on the site. And, Having then looked at it because the original application came in without any information about retail trees or, or otherwise, the developer in his own mind has made uh, an evaluation um, based on community value and, yes, based on the fact that it will make a more pleasant uh, development 
in, in their mind. Um, it is right that, um, in my view, 10 would have been an open development on the set of stand by the committee's original decision, uh, notwithstanding that it was allowed on appeal. It has been allowed on appeal as well, we can build that. We now have a, uh, an application for um, uh, seven uh, on the same site with what looks to me like the trees that are in question uh, for the most part uh, retained. We also draw members' attention to some of the conditions. Condition 11, for example, uh, requires details of bed and back boxes uh, to be submitted prior to, uh, uh, prior to any development uh, taking uh, take, take place. And there are further conditions that relate to protection of the trees during the uh, construction uh, period. Uh, and it's for those reasons that, uh, that uh, I agree with Kathy, Kathy, you moved in approval. Is there a second that for class? Let's see if she's seconded. Are uh, we happy to move to the votes? See those in favour of that, please.